Hello, 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 guys. How are you? Um, give me one second. I'm going to share this video um, to my other channels. For those that do not know me, I'm attorney Shimane Robinson. Today, we're going to talk about the new law that was passed for wholesalers for the state of Illinois. Okay? Um, it's going to be a very quick live because I have a couple other things to do today. We're going to take about 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to take questions. Um, if you guys are available, but give me one second. I'm going to share this to my other pages, and then we're going to spend about 10, 15 minutes tops on this topic, guys, because I, I think it's pretty simple, but I received so many calls at my office. I've also received so many DMs and things, so let's have a conversation about it, but let me share it for everyone. Let's see. You guys know I never know how to share these during videos. Is it on here? Okay, awesome, guys. So let's go ahead and get right into it because I think it's very simple. It's buzzing around the internet whether or not wholesaling is legal in Illinois. Okay, so I'm going to answer your question directly, but then I'm going to answer your question based on the statute and what you guys are hearing. Because sometimes we combine the two or we ask a question where that's not really the question that we're asking, so you don't get the right answer. You guys need to learn how to ask the appropriate questions to make sure that you get the appropriate answer for the question that you are seeking, okay? So short answer, is wholesaling legal in Illinois? Yes, wholesaling is legal. It's not that wholesaling is not legal. The bill that was just signed in Illinois does not make wholesaling illegal. What it does is that they have changed the definition of what a broker is, okay? And yes, it's going to affect you. So they did not make wholesaling illegal. Wholesaling is still legal, okay? So that's your first answer. Yes, it absolutely is. But in your second answer, the question that you really want to know is whether or not you can wholesale. And the answer to that is it depends. Why do it depends? It depends because... In particular, Illinois governor just signed the bill changing the definition of what a broker is, okay? By definition, what we know to do as a wholesaler, the way that we operate as a wholesaler, will now fall under the definition of a broker. What that means is that if you are wholesaling, you must have a broker's license in the state of Illinois if you wholesale as a business, I know some of you are going to get sneaky and going to say, I'm not doing this as a business. Let's not play that game. Here's why. If you do more than one wholesale transaction in a 12-month period of time, you need a broker's license, guys. That's the flat answer, okay? If you are wholesaling as a business, meaning you have completed more than one transaction, or one transaction in the state of Illinois, it now requires you to have a broker's license. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna give you guys some alternatives, but getting a broker's license is not enough for you guys to not continue wholesaling, right? It's not enough for you guys to not get your check. You don't let little things like that get in, in a way of getting your check, okay? Now, what's gonna happen if you wholesale without having a license? Let me be very frank with you guys. If you come to my firm, you guys know I'm a partner at True Lawyer. I'm a licensed lawyer, okay? I have a duty to not about a bit you with helping you to break the laws. So if you come to my firm as a wholesaler, you are going to sign a waiver saying that I made you aware of the laws. You are going to sign a waiver saying that you have not um, completed more than one transaction, or at that point, it can just be one. Because if you completed one and now this is your second one, you should have a license. So you are going to have to sign a waiver. And, I, and my job going to be done. Once you sign the waiver and the liability on me is out the way, now that's an issue that you're going to have, okay? But I really caution you guys to do it right. 
and go ahead and get your license. Why do you want to get your license? Is it a criminal matter? No, it is not. It's a civil penalty. The civil penalty that you're looking at for each offense is $25,000, okay? So we're talking about a $25,000 penalty. Many of you are going to say, how would they know? Realtors are going to trick on you. Straight point to the point. Straight to the point. Realtors are going to trick on you. Attorneys are going to trick on you, okay? Not only that, as an attorney, as a negotiator, okay, when we receive a contract, we are going to say that that contract is null and void, and we don't have to honor that contract because you are not honoring the laws of the state, okay? What does that mean for a wholesaler? You just put the buyer in contact or the seller in contact with a cash buyer. Guess what? We're going to bypass you. I'm going to be very frank and clear. We're still going to close the deal. We're going to tell you that the contract is null and void. Now we have the buyer. We have the seller already. We don't need you, right? You kind of out the way. So I want to be very clear with you guys. I work with many realtors. I work with many attorneys. I work with many wholesalers. Each of you guys' roles are important. It's just a way that we have to conduct business to make sure that we are all conducting business in a way that each party can be successful without either party disrespecting each other. So if you're going to wholesale in Chicago, not Chicago, in Illinois, go ahead and get your license, okay? Literally, to become a broker does not take 15 years. It takes you 90 hours at a class. Some of these classes are allowing you to get broker's license you know, in a month time, or you can complete it. I've seen classes where you can complete it in two months. If I have any attorneys on here, okay, we don't have to do any of that. We pay our $30 to take the test. We go and take the, the um, test and have our license, right? Now, there are fees, penalties in terms of you have to be under a managing or sponsoring broker, things of that nature nature i'm not a broker at this time honestly i'll probably just go take the test next week because i don't have to do anything but walk in and take a test okay uh, but just go ahead and do it the right way get your license if this is a business that you know you want to continue conducting and make a lot of money now i want to talk to you guys about how we got here okay so you know the you know the um where we're at today how did we get here Make no mistake about it. This is about money, okay? We do want to protect the sellers. I think homeowners should always be protected, but understand this is a money play, in my opinion. What do I mean about that? In particular, you have to understand wholesaling is unorganized. It is not organized at all. You don't have an association. You don't have lawyers retained to fight on your behalf. So when new le legislations are coming out, when new laws are coming out, you don't have anyone fighting for you. In addition to that, as a wholesaler, some of you, I'm going to be honest, I work with wholesalers. You guys are clumsy as shit, okay? You're not properly vetting deals. Deals are falling through. Homeowners are, you know, losing out on their homes or being on the contract for months and you're not producing, okay? So it was a lot of trash transactions going on that led to this, but that's not the only thing. As I started off saying, this is a money play. Why is it a money play? If you thought you were going to cut realtors out of their commission and not be organized enough to fight them when they went to get what a broker is, expanded, right? The definition of a broker expanded, that doesn't make any sense. So not only are you cutting brokers out of their money, let's talk about attorneys. As a seller attorney, we get title fees from the title company in the state of Illinois. We get title fees, right? That's how attorneys, real estate attorneys make their money is on sellers. Not really on buyers, but it's on sellers. So what happens with wholesalers? You guys bring a one-page contract that say, hey, I'm going to pay all of your closing costs and fees. And by the way, I'm going to choose the closing agent. When you do that, seller's attorneys are mad, okay? Because you now have took their commission, their title fee from them. So instead of them making a couple thousand dollars, they're now going to make five, six hundred dollars, right? It's some money, but it's not a lot. But they still have the seller. They still have to help that seller, okay? So 
understand that when laws are being changed and they're fighting to change these laws because wholesalers have pissed off attorneys who have lost their um, title fee, right? And then you also have pissed off realtors who feel that they got shorted and they did not get the realtor's commission. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that Realtors are more important than wholesalers or attorneys are more important than any of that. I think that's foolishness, right? At some point, we have to humble ourselves and understand that each individual professional um, is important and they serve a, a role, right? Each person serves a role. There's flaws with each profession. Um, but each, I think, is, is important in my opinion. However, we have to have some decency and order. Another thing that led us here, I'll be very frank with wholesalers. This is going to be a very frank conversation for wholesalers. One page contracts. I warned you guys about this. You guys are going online because you're too cheap to hire an attorney. You don't want to get your contracts drafted by an attorney and you're handing out one page contracts. What happens when you hand out a one page contract? Every bone in my body, every vein in my body, stands up. Every hair on my body stands up. I'm going to edit the mess out of your contract. Now, I happen to be a very investor-friendly attorney. Other in attorneys are not, which means when you send them a one-page contract, they are already alert. They are editing your contracts. They're spending, you know, time redrafting your contracts, sometimes sending four, five, six page addendums to your contracts because they're not investor friendly. Well, guess what? They're tired of doing that. And that's why laws like this take place because they're essentially saying we need someone to regulate them. They're not getting training. They sending us contracts that don't make sense. They're telling us that they have a cash deal. And then later in a transaction, we find out that they're using hard money. Guys, if you did not know, hard money is not cash. Cash is not hard money. Okay? It is not the same. And contracts should be written differently depending on what you are using. I say all of this to say we have to understand how we got here. But even more now that we are here with this new law in Chicago, respect the law, guys. I know some of you don't care. Okay, it's a penalty that you will have to pay. If you're wholesaling, chances are you may not have the money, okay, for the penalty. So don't, don't get into that. Not only that, like I said, as an attorney, on the wholesaler side, I'm going to defend you. But if I get a contract and I'm on the other side, I'm going to say your contract is void. And by the way, we know the seller. So we're going right to the, I'm sorry, we know the cash buyer. We're going right to the cash buyer. And it's nothing you can do. So I'm telling you guys, don't play that game. We're trained negotiators. This is what we do. Whether people feel that attorneys are important or, or not, we've been trained to do a job and we do the job well, okay? Um, so that's something that I want each of you to be aware of. What are some alternatives, okay? You guys know I'm very transparent and I try to give you a full circle of information or at least enough knowledge to do something with. You don't stop your business because a new law come out. That's not how it works. That's what quitters do. You accept what the new law is. One, you go ahead, get your license, your broker's license. Honestly, you guys can have this in the next three weeks. Many of you start studying. Take off three weeks, study, get your test, right? A broker is going to come on here and say, oh, it's four weeks. Okay, if it's four weeks, four weeks, whatever. I'm not a broker, okay? And I don't have to take a class. I can walk in and take a test tomorrow if I wanted to. Um, well, it's 6 o'clock today, so I can take it on Thursday if I wanted to, guys. So get the point of what I'm saying. Become a broker is the easiest way. Second, you want to partner with someone, okay? If you are going to partner with someone, however, this is the last option. Honestly, I shouldn't have said second. But if you are going to partner with someone, please don't let no one dupe you. Because read the laws in the statute. If you are partnering with them and you're putting it in a business that you own, this law applies to you. Your name cannot be on that document if that's what you're doing. You're literally going to have to partner with a realtor, let them do the deal for you, and they're basically paying you a finder's fee. So whatever your finder's fee is, allow that person to pay you a finder's fee. That's another way. If you absolutely don't want to go and get your license, 
find the deals, put the deals together, get a finder's fee and get out of it to avoid being penalized, okay? If you are into investing, I'm not gonna go into detail what double closing is, transactional money, okay? Use transactional money or double close. That's what you're gonna have to do. Yes, it's gonna cost you a little money, but when you double close, you own the property. So you are now selling a property that you own. Now again, I wanna warn you guys, wholesaling is not organized. You don't have attorneys retained to fight on your behalf. So I can see in the next couple of years, double closing is somehow gonna make it that into the you cannot do that either. But for now, you can use transactional funding or you can double close, guys. So again, don't try to jump through hoops to beat the law or I'm just gonna do it either way ago because I don't care about the law because nine times out of 10, realtors are already upset that you're taking money from them. Attorneys are upset that you're changing, you know, the traditional way that we do deals. I'll be honest, attorneys are also upset because when transactions come in, when work come in, there's a certain amount of work that we know that we normally have to do for a deal. When wholesale transactions come in, nine times out of 10, you guys have embedded these properties good enough, right? You don't really have a deal. You have two people interested in something, but the deal isn't together. So it's requiring a lot of attorney time, more time than what we charge for, to be frank, honest with you. And attorneys are upset with that, right? Like I'm an investor, I'm in the industry, so I kind of don't mind it, but it even got to the point, I remember talking to one of my other colleagues. I was like, look, I may have to stop helping wholesalers because they're out of control. They don't know what they're doing. They need mentors, right? They don't need an attorney. They need a mentor to help them to learn the game and then start doing deals, right? But I got a love for the profession. Not every attorney is going to think of that. So just think, you guys. Wholesaling is still legal in Illinois. You just have to follow the law. Go get you a license. Don't let anyone or anything stop your money, especially not becoming a realtor. I mean, I work with many realtors. I love them. I respect them. You know, their job is very important as well, you know, as well as as much as a wholesaler, right? Wholesalers are important as well. Attorneys are important. But it takes, it's 90 hours, right? So don't have anyone scaring you about a 90 hour course. Study, take the class, right? Or do some of the other options that I've already mentioned to you guys. That's pretty much in a nutshell what we're dealing with today. Hi, CC. Hi, Letitia, Garland, Anthony, how are you? But you still would do the deal though. Darius, I'm not referring, I'm not sure what you are referring to. Um, for me, if you bring a deal to me, and I'm gonna ask you, let me be very clear, guys. We're live, you guys can hold me accountable to this. If you call my office and you are a wholesaler, I will ask you whether or not you have done more than one deal, okay? Um, if you tell me no, you're signing a waiver for that because I don't wanna be liable for you breaking the law, okay? If you tell me yes, you need to have a real estate license or find you another attorney. It's just that simple. Why is it that simple? Because when I get into negotiations, this attorney is going to put you through, the opposing counsel is going to put us through a ringer of trying to push this deal through. As you know, time is money. I don't have time to push deals through that don't have a chance of closing or to be negotiating for something that you already know you should not be doing. I'm not helping anyone break the law, right? Like, I'm, you don't pay me enough for that. Awesome. Sherry said the class was changed to 75 hours. Okay. So that's even better. I thought it was 90 hours. It's 75 hours, guys. So that's 15 more hours to one, go get your license and 15 hours to go close the deals that you missed while you was getting a license, guys. We don't make excuses. We make things happen here. You guys know me. No excuses on. Darius, I'm sorry, I'm just going through the comments. So some of your questions, I know you were asking them at the moment that I said something, and I don't know what you're referring to, but he asked which one would you actually need. Thanks, Ken. Here's the thing. If with Darius, okay, Darius' question is, I've had buyers tell me that they only want a one to two page contract. 
here's the thing about a one or two page contract. Did you build report with your um with your seller? Okay, so when you say buyer, are you talking about your cash buyer or the seller? Because the cash buyer can get a one page assignment contract. That's okay, but your seller, did you build report with that seller? Most of the times, what I'm finding is that you're not building enough report with your um seller and what's happening is that they don't trust you so they went one they went and hired their own attorney which they did not have to do but they don't trust you so they hired their own attorney you you heavy like what most wholesalers are doing they're getting the property under contract so fast without building up report okay that when this deal goes to an attorney it's easy for the attorney to really break and sabotage your deal they're breaking down every single thing. They're telling their sellers, no, she's a scam. She's a lie. She's that. He's that. And they're breaking down you guys' deal. And had you build report with your seller, the seller would be like, uh-uh, you're not about to kill my transaction. No, you're not. I trust this person. They're trying to buy my house. Either you're going to approve this contract or I'm going to get a new attorney. That's not happening because you're not doing enough due diligence to get to build enough report with the seller to make sure that they trust you. They don't trust you. So when you send it to an attorney and it's one page, now it's not a matter of what someone told you they wanted. It's an attorney and newer attorneys, or not newer attorneys, I may say younger attorneys, or I'm not even gonna say younger attorneys, investor-friendly attorneys, we, we use the contracts, right? We've seen these contracts, we've done it 100 times at this point, and we don't have a problem. But when you run into an older attorney who's never done a wholesale transaction, they're gonna tear your contract apart. They're gonna start telling the seller, oh, they're scamming you. Do you know they're getting a $30,000 commission? That money should go to you. And they're gonna make a mess out of it, okay? Which is why if you give them a con, not that you have to, because keep in mind, anything on paper that's signed is a contract. Okay, it could be on a napkin. If it's signed by both parties, it's executed. You had a meeting of the minds, it's a valid contract. Okay, however, it's about sometimes you got to appeal to the next person, right? You already know the attorney is going to be on alert with a one page. So I'm going to send you a contract. They got a couple more pages with more of the stuff that I know as an attorney you're looking for to keep you from penciling through because now when you send a one page contract to an attorney he just drafted the contract you took your power away and gave it to the sellers they're not going to do anything in your favor at that point okay yes um sherry the penalty is $25,000 up to $25,000 okay when is this going to be valid let's say this is immediately they signed the law and they made it immediately Meaning now, right now. LOCs, here's the thing, Darius. Dude, let me make this clear. I'm answering Darius' questions. He said, what about different LOCs? Play with Illinois if you want to, okay? I'm being very honest and upfront with you guys. Different LOCs, which you, the individual, been a partner of that LOCs, is mentioned in the statute. They have enough sense to know that someone's gonna try to beat the system. So, if you are a LLC of any, if you are a member, okay, a manager of any LLC, and you have done more than one transaction within a 12 month period of time, you need to exercise one of the options that I discussed with you already, okay? Samantha said, just avoid doing business deals in Illinois. Simple. It could be that simple, guys. Go over, you know, to the next state, do some virtual wholesaling, et cetera. Um, but you don't have to stop doing business here. There's a lot of money to be made here, right? It's just do it within the realms of the law, okay? I wouldn't say that, you know, is more, let's talk about this because this happens a lot as well. So. What I'm seeing for realtors, okay, I work with a lot of realtors. I love them as well. Realtors do wholesale, just so you guys know, which is part of the problem. Um, you know, they want to keep it to themselves, which is okay. We we get it. We're kind of in a dog eat, you know, dog eat dog type world in Illinois, at least. A lot of jealousy, hating, and all that craziness. 
But to Sheila's question, is it more wise to use the contracts that's from the real estate commission? You guys, this is to my attorneys aren't important people, okay? And I know it's a lot of people, so I'm not really singling anyone out. That contract that's written, that's given out by the Realtors Commission, those words have meanings to it. When you guys are wholesaling, the problem is you don't know what to cross out. So you just gave a contract that does not match the deal, right? So both of you just signed this contract, and then you come to me, and half of the contract needs to be crossed out. You have to understand whatever contract you guys use. I don't care if it's a one pager, if it's an eight pager given by the real estate board, whatever contract you are using, you need to understand what you are using, okay? You have to understand the contract. If you do not know what to cross out on a contract, that's a problem. If you do not know what to include on a contract, that's a problem, okay? Now, I'll be frank. I went to law school. I got barred in. It's a reason why we have to get barred in to make sure that we understand legal language, okay? Whether it's appreciated or not, it's a reason for attorneys. If you do not understand it, hire an attorney to tell you what you need to cross out, what you need to include, how to execute your contracts properly. Because when you come to me and you start asking for stuff, or if you overpromise something to a seller that you did not have to promise because you're using a template. Read the contract. If it's 10 pages, I expect that you guys read 10 pages. Or at a minimum, you hire an attorney to tell you what's in those 10 pages, okay? Understand, there, what we're talking about today with wholesalers is called um, unlicensed practice as a broker, okay? So you're practicing real estate brokering without having a license. There's also a such thing as the unpractice of law, okay? So lawyers are also licensed. If you are not a lawyer, I don't care how much you know, you should not be giving legal advice. In the same way that wholesalers can be fined for giving, for acting as a broker, you can be fined for acting as a lawyer and giving clients, home sellers, home buyers, legal advice or your friends and your peers if you're not a lawyer you shouldn't give legal advice you should not advise on legal advice opinions all of that jazz is okay but once you start giving a legal opinion that's a problem that's an unauthorized practice of law and understand the same way that i'm encouraging you guys to respect the realtors unlicensed practice as a broker I'm gonna advise you guys to respect not acting as an attorney if you're not licensed as an attorney because it's a penalty for that as well. And guess what? Realtors will trick on you, attorneys will trick on you, right? That's the world we live in. It's a money game. And it's a, I don't get what I want, I tell type game as well, guys. So again, to your question, you do not want to, um, you can use it. You can absolutely use the contract. It's not a problem with using it, but don't just use a template because it's a template. You need to be able to go on there and cross out what applies, what does not apply. Add on what you need, any additional terms, etc. By the time you get to your attorney, your attorney should not be drafting the full contract for you. Now we can, but do you have a deal? Do you not have a deal? Right? And that's where that goes. Donna. So what can you do if you already have several properties under contract currently and don't possess a realtor's license? So this is what I recommend you do, okay? And this is going to depend on the lawyer, okay? It's really going to depend on the lawyer that's on the other side. Some lawyers may get petty with you and tell you that, too late, your contract expired, it's not a void, right? They could get really petty with you and do that. Now, if not, go ahead and push your deals through. You know, if you're able to push it through, wholesaling should be closed in 14 days at a maximum, right? Anytime wholesale deals go over 14 days, someone don't know what they're doing. Someone did not have a, a um, agreement. You didn't have a meeting of a minds before you came to your attorney. The attorneys are really helping to vet the deal for you guys, right? When it should be you guys have a meeting of the minds, it gets to the attorney, we review it, we negotiate, we close the deals out. But 
if you have some good deals at the table, they're already flourishing, go ahead, close them out, don't do it again. It's, it's one of those type of risk type things, but just be aware that some attorneys can get very petty depending on who they are. Um, and they can go ahead and, you know, tell you that your contract is now void. So what I would recommend doing is um, partnering with someone just to avoid that if you can. Okay. All right, guys, I can take, I have about two more minutes. I can take any other questions. So if you have a question, go ahead and put your questions here. I'm going to take a few more. Again, guys, just respect the law. You know, um, the law is here. Respect it. You know, um, it's not going to cost you money. You're not going to lose money. Money can be made a million different ways. You know, there's a lot of ways to make money. Um, you can still make money as a wholesaler. We're talking about 75 hours, a couple thousand dollars tops, right, um, to get started realistically. And you can continue your life. If you don't have the money, you guys are aware if you're a wholesaler about JVN, you know, partner with someone. Partner with a realtor get, until you get your funds up to be able to do it. Never stop. Never give up. You guys got this. Let me um, look on my other page. If you have any questions, now is the time because this is the last time I'm probably going to do a live on this. They get to the attorney. All right, guys, so it's been nice as always. If I um if any other updates come up, I don't mind sharing it with you guys. If there's specific questions, just go ahead and you know DM me, email me. But I'm not going to I like to do videos because I get way too many DMs. Um, so I try to collect all of your questions and answer everyone's questions at one time. The law is what the law is. Don't try to rip it apart, don't try to make the law your own. It's black letter law. I can post it. If you want to read it, it's very simple, okay? Partner with someone, get a license, or virtual wholesale somewhere else, okay? As always, I'm attorney Shymaine Robinson with True Lawyer. If you um, need to call my office, you can do so by calling 312-442-0057 or inbox us at info at truelawyer.com. That's info at truelawyer.com. Thank you.